All right, uh, Miriam, back to you. Awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for adding that. So here are some program rules uh, for the session, which will be like, be respectful, don't spam the chat, keep mics muted. And yes, as you know, we are recording this. Uh, so you will be getting the recording after the session. Next. Uh, yeah, so basically, Miriam, are you able to copy paste the Slido link in the chat? Yeah, I'm adding it. Um, I think the... Uh, I'm just yeah, um, I'll explain what it is first while you find the link. But basically, to make the question and answer process smoother, we are going to send a link to Slido. I think it's pronounced Slido. It's either Slido or Slido. But it's we're going to send. Okay, good. Um, basically, all you have to do is click that link and ask your questions for Cheeto. And you can upvote for the question that you agree with and want to be asked. And we'll be asking the most popular or most upvoted questions. Um, if you'd rather ask your question like by unmuting, please raise your hand. You can press Alt Y on Windows, Option Y on Mac. If you're calling in on your phone, on the phone app, there's like three dots on the bottom right and you can click raise your hand or just press star nine if you're calling in. Um, so with that out of the way, now let's get to the good stuff. Um, let's keep the chat engaged again. So um, I'm gonna ask you to put stuff in the chat in a bit, but I also want to talk about our UX program. I don't know if some of you know, but at entry level, we do have programs, including our UX program. It's basically like six weeks um, and you'll get to learn the basics of UX design. Um, it's free if you finish, which means you pay like a hundred USD and then you get a complete refund after you complete your portfolio and your assignments and stuff as part of the program. So I will put the link in the chat and yeah, feel free to click that link and check it out. Okay, so now let's um, keep the chat engaged. I want to know what your level in UX design is, whether you're a complete beginner, you're starting to learn, you took a course before, or you're more advanced. Although if you're here attending um, this event and you're on ADP list, I think you're in a good place right now and hopefully you'll have, um, you'll learn a lot from this session. So looks like people are complete beginners. That's awesome. All right. Finishing up a boot camp, that's interesting. Complete beginner, master's degree, nice, congratulations. All right, so feel free to continue sending your answers in the chat while I introduce all of us. So as you probably know, uh, Chido is our panelist for today. He is a product and brand designer and also ADP list mentor. So if you want to connect with him after the session, you can just search for him on ADP list and have a one-on-one -on -one chat with him. Um, Miriam is from ADP list and she is the growth and partnership lead. And then of course me, I'm Jennifer. I'm the growth associate at entry level, although I also like doing UX design on the side. Um, and then we also have Alexander here with us and he will be live tweeting on our Twitter, which I will link in the chat. So if you missed something that was said, you can go back to the recording or you can read the Twitter thread. Awesome. So I'll kick it off with our first question. So Shido, can you tell us about your story and how you got into UX design? Okay, thank you so much, um, Jennifer. It's um, really a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to be here. And I didn't quite understand, um, expect this much people. I'm a bit overwhelmed, to be honest, but it's an absolute pleasure to be here. And um, how I got into design, unlike most of us that are here that actually are here to get directly into UX design, I didn't start up that way. My UX career, my design career started sometime in 2012. I started out as a graphic designer. So it was more or less making posters. Hello? No worries. I just muted the person. So I think you can go. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Start someone wanted to say something. 
Okay, I started out as a graphic designer. So at that level, it was more about making um, posters and social media posts and flyers and calendars and, you know, stuff like that. Mostly stuff that um, people print. So I started off from there and um, it wasn't until 2018 that I'd actually got into product design because I did brand design for about three, four years um, before I got into... Um, I did graphic design, yes, about three, four years before I then got into brand design. And that transition was spurred by uh, my, my love for brands, you know, how you can take an idea and transform that into a visual identity that actually solves the problem. But a brand really interested me. So um, I, I, I got to dive deeper into it to understand it. And it was in dabbling in brand design that I got exposed to product design actually. So over the course of my career, I've gone from um, visual design or graphic design from a very basic visual level to brand design, then to UX design. So getting into UX design was particularly not difficult for me because I already had a full understanding of what design was and how it worked across platforms. So it was more or less acquiring a new skill set that will empower me to be able to build products for specific kind of users across specific platforms. So that was really um, how I got into design. Thank you so much for sharing, Kido. So uh, that actually um, leads me to another question that I kind of just thought of. So did you pay for any courses or did you just learn everything on your own? Okay, good question, by the way. I actually learned everything on my own because back then in 2012, we didn't have platforms like entry-level, for instance, ADP and all that. We didn't have all these platforms. So if you were learning design in 2012, especially if you're in Nigeria, most of what you're going to be learning is going to be self-taught. It's going to be Google, it's going to be YouTube, it's going to be you searching deep in the internet to find um, um, courses and resources you could actually use to upskill. So back then it was, it was mostly, you know, um, self-thought sessions I was having. And it was quite difficult to be honest because looking back with what we have now, the platforms, the resources and all that, it's easier to actually learn UX design now than back then. Thank you so much for sharing, Chido. Um, I'm sure we'll have lots more questions about it um, later, but for now, I'll move on to the next question I had prepared, which is, okay. how do you know if UX is for you and what skills do you need? And keep in mind that most people right now, they're like transitioning or they're complete beginners. Okay. Um, how do you know if UX design is for you? To be very honest with with you, it's, that is no straightforward answer to that. I can't look at your background or your resume or your CV and say, you know what, you're a good fit for UX design. It's hard to tell, you know, on the surface level. Um, but one thing I can say for sure is if you're transitioning, you're just getting into it, you're a junior designer and all that, and you're having doubts about your ability to become a really good UX designer, because of your background or maybe your education or your field of study because it's not design. I want you to do us all a favor right now. Get rid of those doubts because UX design isn't industry specific. I have, I know people that studied design in university and I ended up teaching them design at some stage in my career. You know, so I don't think it's a function of what you study or um, where you're coming from or the experiences you've had or all that. Learning UX design is more about your determination, your passion, your motivations, your ability to apply yourself consistently over time and actually practice until you become better at it. Is your, your willingness to put yourself out there and say, you know what, today I'm going to learn this, the next day I'm going to learn that, is realizing that is a process and actually applying yourself while enjoying that process. So there is no formula for it to know if it's for you. It boils down to you. Are you able to put yourself through the process of learning UX design? And if so, 
um, what measures are you taking? What, what effort, what actions are you taking towards that? That's what would actually determine whether you're a good fit for a good fit rather for UX design or not, rather than looking at your background or um, your skill set currently uh, and all that. And then what skills do you need? I will look at it from two angles. You need soft skills and you need technical skills. When I talk about soft skills, I talk about skills that most of you here um, currently have, most probably have. So these are general and transferable skills like communication, like collaboration, like curiosity, for instance, like, um, like um, passion, like just having a drive as a human being to actually want to achieve something, to actually want to do something. So if you can communicate properly, then you're already one step closer to being a UX designer. If you can collaborate, because UX design is this kind of role that puts you in the middle of the company, literally. It puts you in the middle of a company. So you have in engineering on one end, you have products, you have um, customer service, you have data science, you have the stakeholders, and you're just right in the middle there. And you have to be able to coordinate all these teams and be proactive about what they need and how they need it in order to do your job. So you have to be a good collaborator. You have to be a, a good communicator as well. And when I say communication, I'm not just talking about interpersonal skills. I'm talking about presentation skills, the ability to come and start in, in front of a group of people and say, you know what, this is what I'm thinking and this is why I'm thinking it. That's a really good answer. Um, I was just thinking that, I was thinking it would be like Figma and tools like that. But um, I think what you said about communication and collaboration has definitely been my experience as well. Who is writing this stuff? Sorry about this. I have to yeah, make sure. Yeah, I actually thought you wrote it. No, no, that was not me. Definitely not me. Um, but, here, let me clear that. Sorry about that. Um, but to recap okay. what Shido said, basically you're saying that communication, collaboration are very important skills, right? Yeah, very important skills on the soft side. Then, like you said, Figma, you have the technical skills. You know, yeah. these are skills that are not easily transferable. They are skills you have to learn, like research, like um, learning how to use Figma, for instance, like design, like learning how to gather insights from research, learning how to define um, user flows and information architecture and all that. It gets a bit technical at that point. So to be a good UX designer, you're looking at the soft skills and then you're looking at the technical skills as well. Okay, perfect. Which one would you say is more important? I would say the soft skills to be honest, because there is a difference between learning how to use a design software and learning how to design. Because you can use Figma and still be a terrible designer, really. You can know how to use the move to and auto layout and components and all that in Figma and still not be able to create a product that actually solves the problem. So communication makes sure, makes sure that you're talking to the right users and you're getting the right insights from them. Collaboration helps you understand what engineering needs, what product needs, what customer service needs, what the stakeholders are trying to do. You know, com collaboration also um, empowers you to understand the business. So what is the business trying to achieve? <laughs> you know, outside of business, what is their goal? Um, and how are they positioning to achieve this goal? And how can you tie that into the solution you're actually building in order for them to achieve those goals? So I would use soft skills are definitely a must. And if you complement that with good technical skills, then you are a step closer to actually being an amazing UX designer. Okay, that's perfect. I think that's very motivating for a lot of beginners because I think everyone has communication and collaborating, collaboration skills they can bring over from their previous experiences. Exactly. Yeah, I'm seeing in the chat people used really to be chefs. Yeah. People were chefs, people were from psychology, architecture. Yeah, um, I think somebody said they were a chef too. That's amazing. I think um, just a reminder that you will get a chance to ask your questions at the end. And I put the question link in the chat and I'll put it in the chat again here. 
Um, and feel free to put any more comments in the chat as well, and I'll go through them. So, Chido, the next question I have for you is how would you suggest people get started in UX? Like, how would you know whether to pick a bootcamp versus learning by yourself? Okay. Um, by virtue of being here on this um, group session, the truth is you've already started. You've already taken a step to say, okay, I think this is for me, and I'm trying to get to learn it. I'm trying to get to um you know do what it takes I'm, I'm ready to do what it takes to become a better ux designer so whether you're going to choose the route of um, going through a boot camp or learning by yourself is dependent on how you learn best me for instance it's kind of surprising when i say this but i don't have a formal education in design i've never taken a course on design i don't have a certificate in design i studied yeah, that's economics that's really interesting and then I have, um, I have this um, years of experience in design and I've actually seen myself teaching people that have certificates that um, started design in university and colleges and all that. So design goes beyond, it goes beyond what you are told in a class or what you see in a video to actually what you apply yourself to, irrespective of how many times you take a class. If you don't go home, open your laptop and then get to work on it and put yourself to that process, apply yourself to that process and get to a point where you practice design until it becomes a part of you, then it becomes really challenging for you to actually learn because irrespective of the, the medium you're learning from, you are not applying yourself to it. You're not making it a part of you. So boot camps are amazing. Enrolling for entry level UX program, amazing. But you have to always remember that outside of that, most of the work is on you. Is on you getting home and saying, "Okay, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to um, uh, spare, say, two hours or three hours every day to learn this and actually staying consistent, practice and consistency." I remember back then in school because I was doing a degree in economics and in design at the same time. Sometimes I would, I'm not saying don't go for lectures, but the truth is I was more push, passionate about design than I was about economics. So sometimes I didn't go for lectures. You know, sometimes I just lock myself up in the room there and just consume every video, try out, practice. You know, I kept doing this for years until I got to a point where you could literally wake me up from a nap and I answer any question that you have on design. So it's, it's about knowing yourself, being self-aware, knowing what works for you and taking that route instead of trying to do what every other person is doing. How do you learn best? By video, by audio, by practicing, by someone else teaching you? Follow that route and trust me, you get yourself to where you're going. That's really inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing that, Fido. Um, I hear a lot of people are saying that they didn't want to pay like thousands of dollars for a boot camp, which I totally agree with. Um, exactly. Yeah. So it's really inspiring how you learned everything by yourself and you are super experienced. Um, I'm sure we'll get more questions about this on um, later as well, but I wanted to move on to the last question I have prepared for you, um, which is what, is there any advice that you'd like to give to beginners or even just to your past self? Mm, actually, lots and lots of advice, but um, I would just narrow it, in, narrow it down to one thing or to two things rather. First is understand that it's dependent on you to become a UX, a better UX designer or to become a UX designer, irrespective of the bootcamp, irrespective of the program, it's on you to actually choose to practice and become better at the craft. And then secondly, I've had this experience where people mistake learning a design software to learning design. It's not the same thing. When you're learning a design software, you're learning a medium to create in design. When you're learning design, you're learning design thinking itself. You're learning problem solving. They're not the same thing. So you see a lot of people who can use design software what they can't actually design. And that is where the issue comes because you're seeing 
five years experience, six, seven years experience, and they can't walk them, themselves through a problem to find the solution. Or they are experts in Figma, in Sketch, in HD, in, in XD rather, in Illustrator or Photoshop. So be able to tell the difference between these two. And if you're starting out, instead of jumping right into the technical part of this, I would say learn design principles, learn contrast, learn hierarchy, um, unity, balance, learn um, elements of design, shape, color, typography, you know, learn color theory, for instance, color psychology, learn type, serif, sans serif, when can I use um, which one? How can I combine them? You know, these are things that will make you a better designer. And they are things that a design software wouldn't teach you. So uh, I would say focus on learning design, especially in the initial um, part of your um, getting into UX design. Then you can complement that with software skills or technical skills, and you're good to go. That's awesome. Um, I think I needed to hear that as well. Um, thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people uh, are... Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so a lot of people are sharing their experiences in the chat, but I think, please, it's best to direct your questions on the Slido. So I'll link that again in a bit. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And then we can get to the audience question. So the first question I see here is, how do I make myself look appealing to hiring managers when I don't have any experience? So this person has completed some UX courses and has a decent portfolio, but what else would you suggest? Okay, um, in my experience with hiring managers, you know, they look beyond your portfolio, they look beyond yeah, you have to have a good portfolio, of course, and your CV and all that, your resume and all that, but they look beyond that. So when I'm talking with you, you know, how, what's your, can you communicate properly? You know, how, um, and I, designers sometimes confuse having a portfolio to actually understanding how to solve problems, because you can have a portfolio that has a lot of visual work in it without it actually telling me how you approach problems. So in your portfolio, are you solving problems? And if I ask you to walk me through that process, is this something you can do? Because I've been part of a team that hired designers before, and it's something I noticed, you know, being able to walk a recruiter or a hiring manager through your process. And again, there is this pitfall where you have entry level or junior designers applying to mid-level roles and senior roles. Of course, you're not going to get beyond, you're not going to get through. So before you apply, ensure that you are applying for a role that you are suited for. If you don't have works in your portfolio, saying you've not worked on anything these days, I think is not really a good reason because you can come up with personal projects that you just do and um, you know outline your process and put it together and that's a portfolio. It may not be a real world project or you're able to share your process and your thinking, your thought process, you know, in putting together something like that. So yes, that's the advice I'll give regarding to, you know, um, hiring managers and how you can approach them, communicate properly, um, ensure that you can talk about your work process and in a way that they would actually um, understand it. With the job responsibilities, understand what they are looking for. And in conversing with the hiring manager, ensure that you infuse this in your conversation, infuse, um, the core responsibilities of the role, how you've performed it in the past or how you can perform it in the future. Okay, so basically tailor it to the job description or like look for a job that's suitable for you. And mm -hmm. it's all about like process and what about storytelling? Storytelling, when I say process, yes. Story storytelling is there because there, there are portfolios you look at and you can just see that personality jump at you because of the, the power of storytelling. You know, it just jumps out and you're like, oh, this is interesting. You know, you, you notice consistency in tone and how they um, describe their work and their process and they add some personality to it and all that. It's really interesting to go through portfolios like that as well. So of course, storytelling is really important. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, I think, for me, I for my portfolio, before I even started designing anything, I had 
point form and I went to an ADP list mentor and asked for feedback. So is that something that you would suggest like get feedback early? Absolutely, absolutely. I just did that with someone I think two weeks ago and it was a huge improve, improvement to his portfolio. So um, you can book a session with a mentor and say, hey, I want you to go through my portfolio and I'll look at your level and then what um, hiring managers are actually expecting from you at that level in order to be able to tailor your portfolio you know, to that specific role. Okay, got it. So it's kind of reminding me of the design process and like getting feedback early, iterating, but you apply that to your job search process. Mm, sorry, I didn't get that. So it's like applying the design um, process to job search. So like you Xing your way into getting a job, like you exactly. get feedback early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, it would make the job search more fun for me at least. Um, all right. So the next question is also kind of about getting a job, but it's about free work, which I know some people have thoughts on that. But the question is, if you want to do free work for people um, to build up your skills and get experience, <clears throat> sorry, get experience, like <clears throat> what could you as a beginner designer offer them? As, okay, as a beginner designer, you know, I can imagine that would um, limit your ability to work on certain projects or like I said before, it's beyond just technical skills. You know, when you're working, especially you're working with a team, you know, you can look at helping them better understand their users. You don't need core design or, or advanced design skills to do that. So you can look at research. So do they know who their users are? And is there any way you can be a part of that? You can help them run a survey or just do an interview, which borders are basically on communication, being able to talk to people and get feedback from them, and then being able to analyze that. So, you know, when we think of design, a lot of times we think um, interfaces, we think colors, we think shapes and all that is way beyond that. Now, the, if, if, the, if the clients or whoever it is you're going to work with, if they already have um, a platform or an app or a website or whatever it is they want to and we walk, you could always take a look at it and do a sort of audit for them. Okay, looking at this now, this works, this doesn't work. Okay, it's taking a user five clicks to achieve this. We can make it three by removing this and this and putting this in. All of this, after you, um, by the time you do all this, you've actually not touched any design software. You've not designed anything, but you've actually solved problems you know, for whoever you're dealing with. So I think it's about taking a broader look at design instead of looking at, oh, I have to um, share final screens or interfaces with clients before I have delivered value to them. Think about it, you know, more broadly, think research, think structuring the experience and all that. It will help in adding more things to your plates that you can actually deliver to clients. So basically, think more broadly. I think what your advice about looking at their existing platform or product and thinking of ways to improve it in a UX way is really valuable because I heard that for a job search, if you find ways to improve their product and you show your value, it can actually help you land the job. Absolutely, yes, it does help. Yeah, so thank you for sharing. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, but if not, feel free to submit another one or put it in the chat. So the next question um, that got the most upvotes is how can I conduct UX research remotely? Is there any tools you are using? For UX research. Um, for UX research, it depends on the kind of research. Is it, are you doing quantitative research? Are you doing qualitative research? Um, so when you're doing quantitative research, you're talking surveys. When I do surveys, I use um, Google Forms or I use Typeform. You know, you can use this, just send people a link and then they answer your questions and you can see the results on the platform, whether you're using Google Forms or Typeform. I prefer to use Typeform because it has more personality to it. You can add images and all of that. So I prefer to use that. 
if you're doing um, um, qualitative research and you're talking interviews, like we are on a call right now, you can easily hop on a call and whether it be, be it a voice call or a video call, it depends on what you're trying, the insights you're trying to gather. The approach you take depends on the results you're looking to get. If I'm looking to gather deeper insights into user behavior and through research, I'll probably prefer a video call because I'm not just sharing what you're saying, but I'm also seeing how you're saying your facial expression, your tone of voice and how you're reacting, your body language and all that. It's telling me something about the problem itself. So remotely, you can, you can use the tools that are already our, at our disposal, Google Meet, um, Zoom, um, Google Forms and type forms and all that to gather data and, and get to know your users better you know, through research. Uh, those are very good tips. I'll try to, I think if you Google like user research best practices, there's tons of resources online as well. But um, yes. we also had somebody in the chat wanting you to mentor them. And I think if people search your name on ADP list, they can book a time with you, right? Definitely. Perfect. I see someone here asking me if I can mentor them personally, of yeah. course. Just look me up on ADP list and book a session. I'll be happy to talk with you. Yes, so please use the ADP list platform. It makes scheduling meetings so much easier. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we have lots of other questions. Um, we have people who are transitioning from many different careers into UX design. Um, this question is specifically for someone who has basic knowledge on graphic design and asking how they can progress into UI UX design, but I think we can broaden it to like transitioning from being a chef or like a 3D, like animator, maybe not animator, but like a 3D person and then like an interior design slash architect. So those types of jobs, how would you best advise them to transition into UX? Okay, I know any career transition irrespective of the field can be challenging. Really because you're stepping into the unknown you know something you're not used to and all that but i would i would advise just like you're on this session now and we're, we're talking about breaking into ux the truth is believe it or not you've already one way or the other broken into ux design already because at least you have that motivation to want to do it so about transitioning it's very important that on a personal level you have a schedule and you expose yourself to resources that actually um, get you deeper into what you want to learn. And when I talk about having a schedule is you can say you transition into UX design and maybe at least for 30 minutes or one hour a day, you're not doing something that is centered around UX design. You're not taking the course, you're not practicing, you're not. So first of all, in transitioning, commit yourself first to the process. And then secondly, surround yourself with people that have gone ahead of you. That's why ADP List is an amazing platform where you get to actually speak to different designers and they get to tell you what your experiences are and how you can, and how you can actually um, get through some of the challenges that they encountered as well. Surround yourself with um, people that are of that same mindset and are doing things that you, you want to do. And humble yourself because you have instances where you're trying to learn and then it's, it seems like you're the one trying to teach the next person. So understand that it's a time to learn. Be humble, you know, take on humility as a trait. Like if, if, for instance, even at this level, if I hear anyone speaking about design or sharing resources or whatever it is, like it's almost I become a baby when it comes to design. It's like, I don't know anything. And I'm really curious and I pay attention. That's how you get to learn. Like you have to have that curiosity, but aside that, you know, also have that humility to be able to learn from others. And I think you've said this before, but apply yourself. I can't, I can't tell how important this is. Apply yourself. It might be difficult, it might be challenging at times, but do it on a daily basis. If you don't know what to do, open your laptop and just browse through Dribble or pay hands. Just look at projects people have done. Just go through it for the sake of it. Keep going through it. And then 
if you're going to join a company, if there are entry level um, roles at companies, that is probably what I would most advise because it puts you in a position where you are in direct contact with people that are doing what you want to do on a daily basis. And you can get to ask them questions, can get to learn from them. Uh, you can get to actually see what their processes are like, how they collaborate, how they communicate. It's, you get first-hand experience. So if you can get an entry-level role at any company, perfect. Wow, that was really insightful. Thanks for sharing. Um, I know in the past when I was studying design, I felt like I committed myself, but it was just me looking at Instagram designers posts and that was it. So I think in addition to immersing yourself and like talking to people and networking, um, immersing yourself in that design mindset and environment, um, what would you say about like actually practicing, like going on Figma or like copying like an existing web page and getting better that way? Of course, you know, there are platforms that um, actually support that. It's a really good way to learn. But, you know, there is this frustration that comes from, say, a beginner trying to replicate a website. What I've, in my experience, what I've seen is when they take on a project that huge, especially the early days, it can discourage them from wanting to learn it, you know, because it's difficult to um, replicate something that was done by experts, probably. And I think that's because of the mindset that they are approaching the work. If you approach it with, okay, I'm learning mindsets, you know, you won't get um, frustrated and discouraged. But once you approach it with, oh, someone did this, and if I can't replicate it, then I'm not a good designer. You know, you start to talk down on yourself and uh, low self-esteem and imposter syndrome and all that starts to creep in. So if you're going to do that, approach it with a learning mindset. That kind of leads me to my next question, which is okay. if, you're, yeah, if you're still learning, um, like if you have no prior education background or work experience, you're just learning, you're a complete beginner, you have that mindset, like how would you even start with a portfolio? Um, when you're starting as a designer, I don't think a portfolio is actually <laughs> um, your, uh, your biggest challenge, to be honest, if you're starting as a beginner, that's like something you would have to create later on after you've actually gathered the skill sets and a bit of experience and actually done some actual work, be it personal projects or you know, client projects. Um, I don't think you should start off um, trying to build a portfolio that might be really difficult for you. Aside the fact that the bulk of the work that will be on your portfolio might be low quality work that might not be able to get you into any position really, um, which might end up still um, um, discouraging you. Apart from that fact, it's a time to learn. It's a time to expose yourself to as much as possible because getting into UX design, you might re realize that getting into this, you actually want to be a UX writer or or a UX researcher, or just a UI designer, or, you know, there are so many areas. So first expose yourself to the craft, you know, get to learn it, learn the part of it that works best for you, focus on that, become really good at it, then build a portfolio from there, and, you know? And, um, but if for some reason you need a portfolio at the beginning stages, you can always craft something and book a session with, um, a, session with a mentor on ADP list and go through it. It's a way of learning as well. That sounds good. Um, so it seems like we have a lot of similar questions about, you know, portfolio transition to career. Um, and then there were a lot of people who were asking in the chat about like resources and ways to connect. So do you have any communities or places where you like to find resources and inspiration? Mm. Yes, I'm actually trying to build one myself, but <laughs> until I build that, um, where I find inspiration, um, platforms like Dribble, platforms like Behance, of course, they are great. Um, I love um, UXL. You know, I love how interactive um, their learning um, process is. You know, how it's very engaging. You know, I love that. It's also a good platform to connect with designers as well. 
and um instagram is if you actually know how to make it like me for instance most of the accounts i follow i design accounts you know if i see anything that minutely looks like design on your profile i'm following you because i want to see what your work is like what your thought process is like so there is that and um and again i think we go to find search for inspiration to be honest with you i think sometimes we go a bit too far you know looking for inspiration in from you know places that yes there is inspiration there but i would say what i tell mentees and when i'm teaching design i say design starts the moment you close your laptop the moment you shut it and actually walk away from it design starts because design is in your natural environment inspiration is everywhere you know um be observant pay attention this chair you're sitting on, have you actually taken time to notice it and realize that someone took time to design it for your comfort and how they made the arms, you know, where you're placing your laptop and all that. Like, put more, uh, pay more attention to your natural environment and soak it, soak it in. Because when you're designing, especially if you're going to be an interaction design and all that, the bulk of your thinking is going to come from how people actually interact with their natural environment. That would determine how you make these um, decisions around that experience. So yes, um, there are lots of platforms like until I'm talking about Discord and design bodies and the rest of them. Join anyone that fits um, what you're trying to do and that you can actually get real inspiration from. I think, Sorry, are you on mute? Okay. Yes, um, that always happens on Zoom for me. But what you said reminded me of a book called Design of Everyday Things. I'm sure you've heard of it, right? Um, yes, I've read it, yes. Yeah, it's very interesting because it talks about like the design of like, doors and like things that I never would have thought was UX design, but it That's is. And it, very basic. Yeah. Oh my gosh, somebody in the chat thought the same thing as me. The Design of Everyday Things. Yeah, I highly recommend that book as a resource. Um, I think all designers would recommend it. It goes into psychology and UX and like, it kind of changed my okay. life. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I think we still have a lot of questions, but um, if people want to, I think that's like the time we have now for questions. So if people want to connect with you, Cheeto, how can they do so? Okay, you can do that, of course, on ADP list, Chido Merule. I think if you type Chido, it will pop up. And you could just um, um, book a session and we get to talk on Instagram, Chido as well, Chido Merule, on Twitter, Chido Merule. You can connect with me there. You could also visit my um, website, chidomerule.com, and reach out to me via email there if you want to. Or to send a direct email, Chido Merule um, at gmail.com works okay. okay let me type that sorry <laughs> Chido Merle. yes okay i just put it on the chat you can see it there yeah i linked your adp list as well and it looks like you are available like literally this month so if people want mm -hmm. to hop on a call with you you can book a time there um i think if people have more questions there were a lot of questions we didn't have time to answer you can feel free to book a session with Kido or feel free to message us on any of our like entry levels social media because I used to um, like want to learn design as well. Um, it's we're just like at entry level programs. Um, and you can also email me personally. I'm Jennifer at entrylevel.net. Um, so now I'm just going to talk a little bit about our programs because um well i saw a lot of questions about it in the chat i don't want to sound too like self-promotion y and like cheeto i noticed you mentioned our programs a little bit when you were answering questions so i really appreciate it um so like no pressure to join but there were a lot of questions about portfolios and with the entry level program you we like walk you through all the steps um, you'll get assignments and at the end, you basically compile all of the assignments into a portfolio. So we just break it down by step. So it's not overwhelming. Um, and the way we do things is you join a Discord server and you can work 
with your teammates if you want. You can ask questions there. There's a community there. Um, and for the price, we wanted to make it affordable because the boot camps are like thousands of dollars. So ours is like 100 USD. But if you apply for financial aid, it's basically like five bucks. Um, and you get it refunded if you complete the program. So I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's very hard to motivate myself to continue learning. Like I started so many courses online and I never finished them. But if I put down a hundred dollars and I only get that money back when I finish the program and submit my portfolio and everything, then like I know that it'll motivate me to actually complete it. Um, it's actually only six weeks. So you'll only walk out with one portfolio piece. Um, it's meant to be like, for beginners. So um, it will just be covering the basics. Um, again, you can feel free to email me at jennifer at entrylevel.net and contact Shido using this APS link. And everything will be emailed to you after the event. So the event recording are the resource links. Um, I compiled a lot of UX resource links, but as Shido said, it's all about immersing yourself in networking and like um you know finding inspiration outside of your laptop right. <laughs> so do you have any closing words Shido anything you'd like to say okay um I'd like to say that I'm really really excited to be here and I'm glad that um I know this much people are actually interested in learning UX design and to be honest you all are a step closer to learning UX design and it's not the stuff as you think, or you've been told, it's not. It's about you just taking it one step at a time and learning one thing at a time. Realize that there are going to be challenges, but don't see it as obstacles, see them as opportunities to learn, you know, and that way you can actually become a better UX designer. Yeah, that's a great point. I think by being here, well, now you know me and you know Chido, so um, feel free to always contact us. Um, as Chido said, it will be hard at times, but you can always reach out to us and we'll try our best to encourage you and to help. So I'm going to stop the recording now. Um...